So when you landed, did you guys land under fire or did they drop you off at a, a, a port or anything like that? Fortunately, we wasn't under fire when we landed. Do you remember when you stepped off the boat, what it was like and what was kind of going through your mind? Yeah, I was kind of glad to get off that boat. <laughs> um, what outfit were you guys in? Well, it was, we was in the uh, armored infantry and we were transported in half tracks. There was 12 of us in each half track. Did you guys start in France and and did you have to liberate more areas of France or were you guys pretty much going right into Germany or other areas? We went into uh, Belgium at the, at the Battle of Bastogne and then went on into the other countries. So tell us a little bit about the Battle of Bastogne. What do you remember about that? Well, it... We had the Germans surrounded there, and they were low on fuel. And they were trying to get out of there so they could get some fuel for their vehicles. And we shut them down. Do you remember what the weather conditions were like there? Actually, the weather over there was just like it was at home. When we had snow over there, we had snow at home. And when it rained, it rained. But uh, then when it was nice, it was nice. The weather was just about like it was here. What was it like sleeping in a foxhole your first time out on the front? Uh, Actually, we kind of liked it because the weather was cold and you get down in that foxhole and then we'd take branches of pine trees and kind of put over the top. So it was fairly warm in there. So we did, they'd have, we'd have uh, two guys to the foxhole and then every two or three hours we would change and the other guys would go back to get a cup of coffee or whatever. And uh, so it worked out pretty good. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we were always acting a fool, just same as normal. And uh, there was a German soldier that he had been wounded, his arm, and he come into this Red Cross to get fixed up. He didn't know we were there. So I told this buddy of mine, let's have a little fun. I said, you fire three foot on one side of him and I'll fire three foot on the other side and we'll chase him back to the woods. Now I said, don't don't hit him. I said, he's not hurting us. <laughs> so that's what we did. <laughs> so, Ch chased him back to the woods. So when he ran, so when he ran back to the woods, was he, did he run into the woods never to be seen again? Or? No, no. We captured him later with another group of his men. The reason I know, because he had his arm all bandaged up, and I knew it was him. <laughs> I told the guys, I said, now don't hit him. I said, I want him to live <laughs> to tell his grandchildren <laughs> his experience. <laughs> the, the German army that you guys encountered um, when you when there was a when you were involved in combat with them, uh, what weapons and uh, 
tactics did they use um, on you guys that you can remember? Well, they'd use, uh, use some mortars. They would zero in on our unit and we'd keep moving so they couldn't trace us everywhere. Does the term uh, German 88, um, does that ring a bell to you at all? Yeah, that made such a scary noise, kind of, they called them screaming memes, and uh, you could tell when an attack was coming because of that noise. So when they used those, was it followed up by an attack usually? Yeah, the uh, uh, we were fortunate to have some airplanes with us. We radio them, and they'd bomb the Germans. So the the German tanks. Uh, can you tell us a little little bit about those and how they were used against you guys? They made a tank that was. Uh, a little bit stronger than ours and uh, we'd get into some tank battles but uh, we we had a little bit weaker ones but we had more of them so it kind of balanced out pretty well. Do you ever have any Close instances with the with these German tanks at all? Um, did did you guys kind of fear those tanks a little bit, or you know when when you saw a tank, like what kind of how did your mind process when you saw the enemy tank? Um, well, I know we were pretty close to one one time, and they they fired. And the concussion kind of knocked us for a loop. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, like I say, they had some pretty good tanks, but we had more of them than they did. So it kind of balanced out. So did you guys ever have any instances where uh, snipers were present, whether that was out and more of a rural area or in the city, cities at all, where you guys were, were snipers common? Yeah, they, the snipers would get in these uh, steeples of the church, and we wouldn't bomb the church or anything, but we'd have the Air Corps come by close and knock that steeple off. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was in there had a pretty thr thrilling ride. <laughs> Did you guys ever capture any snipers at all? Uh, no, I don't believe we did because uh, they would uh, either take off or we we'd Eliminate them. Mm -hmm. Was there ever any instances where you had a close call or somebody with you had a close call? Yeah. A sniper? Can you yeah, tell we've us about had that. that. Can you tell us about one of those instances? Yeah, we uh, knocked off a, a lot of church staples because of the snipers hanging out there. We, we wouldn't bomb the church, but we just Try to knock them off of there. Would, it, would the airplane actually hit it with its own wing, or or how would they knock off that steeple? Well, the plane would come down and close enough to hit, just hit the individual, or they see the plane coming and they get out of there. <laughs> this one lieutenant. He'd always want me to go with him, <laughs> night patrol. I said, I'd like to ask you a question. He said, go ahead. I said, why do you pick on me to go every night? 
We were, we'd go on patrol. We wasn't supposed to do any shooting. Just find out where the enemy was and then report back to artillery. <laughs> oh, he said, I feel s safer with you on patrol. I said, I don't feel safer with you. You take too many chances. <laughs> so, so why was it that he felt safer with you? I guess because I rated expert on rifle training. <laughs> when you guys came from, uh, you said it was Belgium and Bastogne, what, uh, as things kind of progressed, did you guys move more to Germany or were you guys in a different country before you got into Germany? Yeah, we went into uh, Belgium and then on into Germany. And, uh, and so when you guys went into Germany, did the resistance, uh, the fighting, did it get more intense the closer you guys got into Germany? No, it it seemed to balance out. They uh, they were kind of in the process of, I guess you would say, retreating. They were leaving, and uh, so we uh, we didn't have it too rough. When you guys were consistently moving forward, uh, what was the leadership like? in your in your outfit um who who who, who took charge um and, and who i guess usually made the advances and, and and whatnot and what were your roles like you specifically what were your roles like well we had a uh, a lieutenant that was in charge and a uh first lieutenant that was back up and there one day we uh, were sent on a secret mission and us guys didn't even know where we were going or anything the, only the commander knew it was secret and uh, so <laughs> wouldn't you know the Lieutenant and his first lieutenant, second lieutenant, both got killed with aircraft. And uh, it was a secret mission. I, we said, the guy said, now what are we going to do? Nobody in charge. I said, I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going back to headquarters. <laughs> So we made it back to headquarters, and got reassigned by another group, but uh, oh, there's a lot of, they had those uh, pine forests, real thick, and one machine gun fire uh, would, and bombs come over there, that would scatter the shot like you wouldn't believe. We finally got used to it, but some of them didn't make it, and some of us did. So I guess they said that was war. <laughs> so were there, you talked about some of them that didn't make it. Were there any of your friends, guys that you were the foxhole buddies with? Uh, just uh, army friends. It wasn't... Uh, people that I grew up with, but uh, just army friends. So who were some of the, uh, your army friends that uh, were, were killed in action or even wounded? Well, it, it, it was always hard to see anybody killed in action, and basically people you knew, and uh, but there wasn't anybody uh, real close that I knew, but uh, it was sad to see 
anybody killed in action. When you saw your, uh, your first, or in, encountered your first dead GI, how did that make you feel seeing that person, you, you know, dead? Did that, did that strike you in any particular way? Did that change the way you viewed war? Yeah, the uh, hardest part was the, uh, I guess there was probably 250 people in this barn, uh, Germans, and it got bombed killed a whole bunch of them and walk by there and see that, that wasn't very pleasant. So when something like that happens, how do you, how do you cope with that? How, whether it's the enemy or something tragic like that happens to something in your outfit, what, how do you, how do you overcome things like that? Well, it was pretty hard. I'd, a place like that, and the hardest part would see our GIs in there going through that debris, trying to find some pistols and so forth. That was the hardest part to take. You know, just kind of the backing off of that. Was 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 souvenir hunting, I guess, or souvenir collecting? Was that something? Uh, what was it big? And then why? Did people, I guess, collect the, the souvenirs from, en from enemy soldiers? Well, there were some guys that uh, they would, every chance they get, they'd, and I don't know, I got a couple souvenirs and I didn't have to go through that kind of stuff, but some of them had to, they thought. Who were some of your comrades that um, that you were close to going into this uh, backstone? Well, I got a big kick out of Patton. He was the only general that you would see up front in battle. Now Eisenhower, he had an office. He, he ruled from his office. Patton was right up there with the boys. That's what I liked about him. So you actually saw uh, General Patton. Yeah. In the person. Several times. What did you think about General Patton? Like what were your, when you saw him or when the troops saw him, um, what did that do to your guys' morale? Well, he was one guy that he wouldn't ask the troops to do anything that he wouldn't do himself. So when you when you saw George Patton on the on the front lines, how did he conduct himself that that commanded your guys' respect? Well, he just felt that he was one of the guys, and that's the way he operated. So what did, what did he carry with him onto the battlefield? Do you remember what um, he had on him or how he was dressed? <laughs> yeah, I, I remember his pearl-handled re revolvers. He had one on each hip. <laughs> I never seen him using them, but... He had them there for use. <laughs> um, talk a little bit about your uniform and what you had on, what you carried with you when you were on active duty and on the front. Uh, we uh, uh, didn't have the uh, baggy uniforms that they use now. We had the regular uh, uh, OD suits that we had didn't matter how hot it was or how cold that's what we wore so how did you guys regard the enemy troops 
Um, what was your what was your thoughts about them and and that type that that type of thing? Well, I guess I had a little different look on it as some of them. I would look at the line of the Germans giving up, and I thought they're just like us. They've got a family. Their family's waiting on them. And I thought their family's waiting for them to come home. So during all this this war and and combat and everything like that, did you ever uh, write to anybody or did you get mail from any of your family during your time overseas? Oh, yeah. We uh, uh, didn't have too much time, but we every once in a while we was able to send a letter home. Mm -hmm. And we get letters. So who wrote you? My dad, mother. Who else? Hmm? Who else? <laughs> did your, did your... Oh, my sweetheart. <laughs> so you, you, had a, you had a sweetheart. You haven't mentioned that uh, thus far in the interview. So um, who, who was your sweetheart, I, I guess, at the time? Were, were, you, was, were you married? Or just a girlfriend? No, no, we wasn't married. Uh, but she, she was my sweetheart. But she passed away, and we never had a chance to get married. Oh, Dad, you were ma you were married for seventy years. No. To Mom. Well, yeah, but that's a different one. You had another sweetheart we didn't know. Yeah, I had. <laughs> Uh, well, I thought you ought to have alternates <laughs> to fill in. <laughs> so you had a high school sweetheart that, yeah. that was right there. Yeah. Okay. And um, so can you, what did you write about to your mom, dad, and sweetheart, and what did they write to you about? <laughs> Mostly, she said, you're safe. Said, yeah, we're safe. <laughs> so when you, when you got mail from mom and dad, how did that make you feel? Good. How often did they write to you? Actually, one of them, one or the other of them, every day. So, when they wrote to you, um, what did they typically write about? They, were they asking about how you were doing, or were they telling you about life at, at home? Or? They want to know where... My dad, he had a map uh, where our unit was. He had it all marked out. <laughs> He wanted to make sure we were safe. I guess I should have asked this earlier, but did you did you get wounded at all, or did you get any 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 medals at all during your your the campaigns that you were involved in? There were times when I could have got medals if I'd wanted to turn it in, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to, any publicity on it at all. Did you get wounded at all? No. I was fortunate. So as the war was winding down, what was the fall of Germany like? The, the, the closing days of the war before the surrender, were you guys in Berlin? Yeah. Well, uh, the, at that time, the, the Germans, they were, I'd say, kind of relieved because they'd been in war for so long and they wanted to go home and forget it. 
they'd give up by the thousands. Just down the street, just lined up, their hands up, they wouldn't give up. So the, so the wars ended and Ernie's relieved. And so what did the army do with you once, did you go into occupation mode in, in Germany when the war was over with? No, they asked me to sign up for another. They said, well, you sign up, you can retire when you're 38. I said, I'd never reach 38 if I re added some more time on this. <laughs> so were you immediately sent home when the war in Germany was over with? Yeah. They tried to get us to sign up for more time, but no, we were released, were released and went home. Was there a point system at all? Uh, yeah, there was. How did that work? Well, if you'd been in so long, they'd give you so many points and they'd take the ones with the m most points first, and then the others would come afterwards to be released. So you had a fair amount of points built up. Yeah. And you got to go home. Mm-hmm. Now, um, what was your rank going in, and what was your rank when you got out, or when, you, when you, the war was over with? I was private first class when I went in. And I was staff sergeant when I came out. Um, when were you, pro those promotions, when did they happen? Was it at the end that you were pr promoted from private first class to staff sergeant? Well, it, uh, I had, I was in charge of the supply room. And uh, that's, that's what I, what I was doing when I got released. I was in charge of, had to take care of the laundry, have it sent down a certain time and to headquarters, things like that. So when you get back home or when you get back to the U.S., where were you discharged at? Well, I was at Fort Lewis, Washington. I get that's where I got discharged from. And so, when you were discharged, um, well, I guess when when you're discharged, but when you when you got here, um, how were how was um, how were you and other troops received when you were when you were coming back into the states? Well, we was uh, riding the trains coming back. And what um, when when you got back uh, to Crestline, who picked you up from the train depot? My dad did. And he drove you home. Yeah. And then when you got we home, we lived at that time. We lived in Crestline, oh, lived in so it was just a matter of going downtown. Okay. So when you when you get home, you see your mom and your sister and your dad for the first time. And how many years? How did that? How did that two, feel? Two years. So two years. You haven't seen your family in two years, and you see them. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, it was a great reunion. What did what your mom do when she seen you? What did she do? What did she, what did she do when she seen you? Give me a hug. Did your, was your sister quite a bit bigger from when the last time you seen her? Yeah. She, she said, 
You mean you don't have to go back? <laughs> she was three, three years old. No, I said I don't have to go back. She, she said not ever. <laughs> So when you get to your bedroom in your house, what did your bedroom look like? Do you remember seeing your bedroom when you first walked in? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't used to that. <laughs> We'd sleep on the floor somewhere. <laughs> Take a GI blanket. <laughs> so when you're at your house and you lay down in your bed for the first time, since your long journey, what what goes through your head when you're when you're when you're back in your bed at home for the first time in two years? Not much. I was asleep in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever feel, or were there any instances that happened, or this could even be some close calls? Do you ever feel like there was a time that like you felt like God intervened, or there was a higher power that just well, got you through something or your unit through something. That's what pulled me through. I just say, Heavenly Father, have your own way. Can you uh, show us your little Bible? Uh, pick that up. Or you said that your your mother had given you this Bible. Yeah. Can you hold that up? You read? Did you? How often did you read that when you were on active duty? Oh, it depend on what time you had while you're busy, while you're not busy. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you want to add to this segment? For something we missed or there's a thought or a story? Well, people would ask me, wasn't you scared? And I said, no, I wasn't. Well, why not? Well, I'd just say, God Almighty, may your will be done. And I was completely at ease.